And finally, what came in the mail was my uh, my VFD for the uh, Bridgeport. Got a little bit of reading to do, <laughs> but essentially, RS and T is your inputs, and um, each leg of that. If you had three phase, you would hook one to each one. If you have single phase, you're just going to hook two of your hots to any one of the two leads, and the third one stays out. And then the U, V, and W are your three outputs. And uh, the and then number nine is your ground, so uh, that'll be your three phase coming out going to the motor. And all these little guys up in here are for all like uh, external controllers. Uh, if you want to make like a, a potentiometer for speed control, or if you want to uh, have jog functions and all, you can kind of zap into all those guys. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to try to get it so that I can mount this thing on the pole and uh, get it running. So on the machine over here, I started just pulling off some of the panels. It's got a cord coming over from the other side and uh, a forward and uh, reverse switch, which we're, you're going to end up not using. But these are the three uh, phases right here going into the motor. So I may just take these three wires, mount them up there. That will nullify the switch. And uh, I could use this, maybe this wire going to the controller. Right now that went to just a big on off switch over here. So I'm still kind of working that out but uh, I'm thinking that's the way I'm gonna go. I may have that go into the, uh, the VFD, this wire. Bypass like I said and then we'll run a new plug. I might be able to steal this now, it's not the right type. The, the cord that I'm running with the 220 on the welders and all, which is I'm planning on using it on that too. It's just pretty much like the dryer plug setup. So I want to see if I have a a female version of that. That's what I need to kind of have hanging off of there with a cord. I and I go uh, do some wiring. And it's time for the preliminary power up. So what I decided to do was I just pulled the cord that went from that big breaker that went to the motor left all this just the way it is. I was going to bother, you know, transferring it over. But I figure what I'm going to do is I'm just, it, depending on which way it goes forward or reverse, I'm just going to stick it in whatever that gear is. I think I'm okay with that. And I'm just going to just take this handle off and just leave it. There's no sense, uh, you know, if you're not going to use it and take it out of the system anyway, why don't you just uh, disable it? So anyway, so that is uh, running to the controller. And get those three outputs on there the U, the V, and the W, and then the ground on the end. So that's what you got is a black, a red, and a white, where the three phases going out, and then power coming in. You got ground on the end down there under the R, and then the S and T are, you know, your, your 220, your separate 220s. And that is just going down to the end of a plug. And then uh, I, that's what I use in my garage. It's way too heavy for what this little one horsepower motor is running, but it's better to, I guess, be too heavy than too light. So uh, I'm ready to go fire. Put the plug in the, together anyway, and we'll kind of see if the panel lights up, hopefully. <laughs> so I'll figure out, pop me in the stand. Let's see if we make pretty red little numbers or smoke. Dun, 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 dun. Nothing. <laughs> okay. There it goes. There you go. And I believe I probably may have to program a couple of uh, parameters on that. I'm not sure yet. Looks like it's flashing code. I don't know what that code would be. And forward, and we just go for it. What do you think? <laughs> Don't like that.
how it's calibrating itself. I don't know. I guess I better do some reading, huh? scares me. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go get educated on this and make sure there's no other thing I need to go switch or do. But I don't see smoke coming out, so that's a good sign. At least it didn't blow up. All right. Back in a minute. All right, so I think I got it. Um, basically, you got a, a program and a bunch of menus in the book, and you have to go through and set all the parameters. Uh, making sure it's set at 220 volts, uh, what the hertz is, uh, ramp up, ramp down speed, uh, they will set at three seconds. Uh, I was looking through the book, but uh, I actually got to admit that I ended up cheating and going on the computer and uh, typing into somebody else's, uh, say how to set a VFD up on a bridge port. And that's what I ended up getting. It told me how to set all my parameters and my, uh, my amps draw for the motor and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so that worked out really good. And now I just had to go figure out how to con use the control panel. So all those are locked in and saved. And uh, that probably about 10 minutes. So now you just got forward and reverse. Right now the forward light is flashing, so it's in forward. If you hit it, it goes off and it goes into reverse. It means it's going to go the other direction. And uh, so that's that. So if you hit run, now it should ramp up in three seconds. Which it does. It stop. Take three seconds to stop and then reverse. Hit it. And you can adjust the, uh, so that's the, uh, I guess the speed that it's running at or the, or the frequency that it's running at. You can kind of go change that. So if I want to go slower, if I want to go slow it down, the problem is it's going to go to that first digit. So you kind of want to bring it to like the third one over there and then, and then you hold it down, you hear it slowing down. I believe I could change those perimeters so it could actually overrun the speed too. And now it's just kind of putting along. And then ramp it up the same thing, and you, know, you can kick it over to the, to the top dial there and just Max it out again. Stop it. Forward. Oh, wrong one. Now forward. Right. Well, looks like it uh, works pretty good. I want to go around. I haven't done anything to the machine yet, so I haven't done any uh, oiling. I haven't done any alignment. Nothing has been done. But I just want to make sure I got it kind of all up and running and doing what it should be doing. Motor seems fine. It was chirping a little bit when I first kind of started it up, like little goosey kind of bearings. So I want to go up and see if there's any kind of uh, oil cups or whatnot on the uh, end cap bearings. It seems good. I should want to. Don't know what gear to leave it in either. Right now we are in second to slowest. So we are in that and we're probably in back gear so probably running at 135. I'm liking it, not too hard. The wiring part was easy of it. The hardest part was just, if I had to go figure out those codes, it'd probably take me a while. And the amps, that just kind of came off the amps on the motor. Little tag up there, I put it at 3.8. An 8 or a 6. I think it's an 8. So, and that's just a 1.5k 1 1 VFD. Um, they go up and up and up, but uh, you want to be a little bit higher than a horsepower. That's good for, it's rated for one and a half horsepower motor. This is a one horsepower. That should be fine. 
Hey, well, I'm gonna go play a little bit more and uh, get more edumacated and maybe kind of uh, help some of these wires out a little bit, get them out of dangerous way. At some point, I want to get some uh, some conduit, probably tuck them up to the pole and some conduit and run them down. And I gotta leave this one with a bunch of slack in it because this one is, in fact, you gotta rotate the head around. So, get all my covers back on, take that switch off. It's already going the correct direction, so uh, it's on forward. And it's spinning forward, so that'll work out for that. And plus, if ever, after I drop dead and the next person has this, uh, if they have three phase, they can all just put it right back to the way it was and you don't have to change anything. Hey, so I've been playing around. I took the belt and I put it on the highest speed and I put it um, in high range. So when it's all cranked all the way up, it should be running at 2720 RPM. I have a feeling the motor's not coming all the way up to speed, but I'm not quite sure why. Right now I'm just kind of running at 10. So I can ramp it up. It just seems that what it is, I need like a tack that I can put on things to kind of figure out what's really going on. I'm just not sure if that's wide open on that motor or not. So, so I think I'm going to go do now. I got an mill in there too. That should be top speed. Is um. I think I'm going to go put a piece of steel in there. I'm going to put the belt back somewhere in the middle again. I just, just want to see if it's got enough snot to kind of start uh, grinding through some steel and uh, that kind of you know, confirm whether I'm in a good range or not. Is actually putting a, a load on it and see if uh, it does what it's supposed to. You, you lose um, about 20% so if that's uh, um, a one horse motor you know you're now you're down to eight tenths or three quarter is uh, the actual output because it's not really three phase it kind of it for starting it 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 starts it with uh, like an offset phase and then once it's up there running it just kind of drops that one leg so uh, that's kind of how they operate but anyway let's uh get it retooled up and uh, get a piece of metal in there and uh, see what it does all right so it's back in low range and uh that's checked up I put the belt back second to the slowest speed, so it essentially should be 135 revolutions a minute. And uh, yeah, the bit's uh, 5 eighths, I'm going to say. I'm going to fire it up and just kind of run it into the metal and see what we get. It would help by tightening the head down, wouldn't it? And let's do another little plunge cut. Kind of played around with my settings. I think I'm uh, in high gear. It should be around 1100 RPMs. Should be. Side. But now I gotta go educate myself. Two clean videos there, and uh, I also want to look up how to uh, how to adjust all the um, slot that's in the Gibbs. Uh, if I would think it's adjustable, but uh, just kind of educate myself all that that kind of stuff and uh, see what I get into. Uh, all the handles seem to crank down. Of course, you take the slop out, but uh, the table is probably the worst. This one. 
that one. That's about about 80 thou with a slop right in the middle of it. So I don't know if it's uh, slop that's on the um, the screw or slop that's uh, on the the dovetails. But uh, that'll be my education. And, uh, you gotta kind of go through the whole thing anyway, and uh, I want to clean it all up and uh, regrease everything, and uh, probably get a, wash it down maybe with some kerosene or whatnot, parts washing fluid, get all the crap off of them, and uh, start fresh. But uh, she's operational and working, so I'm happy for that. Uh, I already got a job to go uh, egg out some brake drums and some hubs for uh, larger studs, so uh, it'll get its first workout probably uh, a little tomorrow morning and uh, Friday. Alright guys, well I'm going to go shut her down right here, and uh, again, thanks for watching, comment, subscribing. Uh, you guys are welcome to uh, comment on uh, all, my, all, all my errors, but uh, that's fine. Again, I'm just screwing around with it right now, just trying to educate myself a little bit. But, uh, we'll get there. Thanks for watching.